I'll talk to you very simply on the making of a prince. Because I believe today. Ah, your day has come. Ah, oh, since it's not you, somebody collect that one. I know you've been asking, how does it happen? Your own is coming now. Okay, let me just read the passage of the Bible for you. Genesis 32, 24 to 30. And then we get into a few talk and then we go. He said, and Jacob was left alone and there stood the man with him until the breaking of the day. And when he saw that he prevailed not against him, he touched the hollow of his tie. And the hollow of Jacob's tie was out of joint as he wrestled with him. And he said, let me go for the day break it. And he said, I will not let thee go except thou bless me. And he said unto him, what is thy name? And he said, Jacob. And he said, thy name shall be called no more Jacob, but Israel. For as a prince has a power with God and with men and has prevailed. And Jacob asked him and said, tell me, I pray thee, thy name. And he said, wherefore is it that thou dost ask after my name? And he blessed him there. And Jacob called the name of the place Peniel. For I have seen the face, God face to face. And my life is preserved. Can I hear your amen? amen. Because of time, I'm not going to get into much as a Jesus. But let me start with something very simple. And that's the first point I want to throw at you. I'm just going to just be talking on that until I get to where I'm going to. Are you here? Yes, huh? yes, the first thing is this. That breakthrough people are restless from the womb. Breakthrough people are restless from the womb. If you meet anybody who is already 16, 17, 18, going to 30, and is not restless about destiny, is not a breakthrough person. Breakthrough people are restless from the womb. The guy we're discussing today is called Jacob. And you see Jacob, you are holding on to God and saying, I won't let you go except you bless me. But it didn't start that day. It wasn't something you just woke up to. From the very womb of his mother, he has been fighting for significance. It was the guy that was fighting with his brother about who would come out first. From the womb. That's a breakthrough person. Now, there are many persons that are here today who are still less than 20. And there are some of you here who are 20 to 25 and you still think you are young. And you are still looking at life with the eye of uh, a mystery and all of that. Please wake up, wake up, wake up, wake up. Breakthrough people are restless from the womb. If you don't start focusing on your destiny and start fighting to get there, you'll be celebrating others when you are old. You're not hearing me. One of the biggest deceptions people have in life is this. Well, I can waste my primary school, waste my secondary school, and then waste a little bit of my university. And when I come out of school, I then adjust my life. That's nonsense. Breakthrough people are restless from the womb. Where is that's a back echo that you should take away from there. Come on, are you hearing me here? And I need everyone here today to catch a mentality that you're no longer young. <laughs> if you're in the university, you're not be small picking. Anybody telling you to take it easy, the person hates you. And if you're still looking at your life and saying, well, I have time. <laughs> you better wake up. That time passed yesterday. If you have my voice, say yes. yes. Don't let anybody deceive you. In a few years' time, that responsibility will be everywhere. Some of you are already here and are having a young boy telling you, I love you. That's telling you that Bele is coming soon. You're not hearing me here. <laughs> The man that starts telling you I love you, that means Bele is coming. That's not that thing. <laughs> you didn't hear me. <laughs> that means that very soon you are no longer a young girl, you are my mama. That pointed breast, as much as I start sucking it, it's coming. <laughs> Am I talking to somebody here? <laughs> so, 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 stop, stop deceiving yourself. Wake up. Time is passing. Time is. And for, for the young people, for the young men, it's even worse. A whole generation is waiting for you. Gears can coast, but men can't. From day one, you're fighting. You grow up with a sense of responsibility. 
Very soon they'll be quoting Bible for you. If you can't take care of your house, say, what's an infinite? <laughs> and brothers and sisters, poverty is not an old age problem. Poverty is a young man problem. If you don't get it as a young man, <laughs> in old age, you'll just be harvesting it. Poverty is planted as a seed in youth. Old age is just harvest. Poverty don't mature. <laughs> is anybody hearing me here? <laughs> you plant it as a seed as a young person. You just harvest it in old age. When we're talking about the making of a prince, understand that breakthrough people are restless from the womb. And if you're not restless yet, you're late. Better wake up now and start fighting for life. Jacob started fighting from the mother's womb. Second point is this. Are you with me? Huh? Uh, you see, because I'm trying to rush, I don't want to start weaving from one revelation to another. So just follow me. Let me just give you a point. <laughs> are you here? Yes. Second thing is this. There are two kinds of names that people have. How many kinds? The name you received and the name you achieved. Jacob received the name. <laughs> they called him Jacob. Then he achieved their name. They called him Israel. The mother said to him, You are a knee grabber. You are a supplanter. You tried to pull your brother back, but you could not. We call you a cheat. And then Jacob fought his way through. Until God said, No, 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 no. Your name is not Jacob. What they called you is not your real name. He said, as a prince, you have wrestled with God and with man and you have prevailed. So, we call you a prince. Question is this. As your life is progressing, what name will you carry? Will you have the name they gave you or the name you achieved? I think I'm wasting time here. Maybe I should have gone home. At least I would have taken my bath before coming. Is anybody hearing me here today? <laughs> you see, you see that, that, that's, that's the difference. There are some people that were born with a name and died with that name. They lived their whole life with the name they received. It's okay to receive a name from your parents, but don't die with that name. I don't mean go and do a name change. I mean achieve something that will be called by. Am I talking to somebody here today? The making of a prince achieve something that they will call you by that. There must be a passion in you. You know, a lot of times we come around church and it's okay. And we are praying for God to just show us favor. Somebody just drop a million in your account. Nonsense. Don't pray that nonsense prayer again. That's not your position. You should be the one dropping the million. I need a destiny helper. I need to get oh God, raise me to a point. I'll be a destiny helper to a thousand persons. You are not hearing me. I was out uh, uh, in the uh, Caribbean a few days ago, and then I got it. I saw something they posted on somewhere in my uh, from my area. One of the local government people that is related to me posted something and listed families that he has done a survey across the whole community in different parts of the place that can't feed themselves. And he made an appeal and then a debate ensued. This one from this village, this one from there. They say it's the work of a, a local government person to find out people who are poor. What are people doing? And all everybody was talking. This one is talking from London. This one is talking from everywhere. And all the issue was simply that this man just said, I did a survey. There are so many people who cannot feed themselves and they are dying. 
Is anybody ready to help them? And I just thought about it. So I sent him a personal message. I said, what will it take? He mentioned. And then the next thing I saw is he listed a hundred families. And he said, lead pastor George Izumwa has given things to these hundred families. And I said to myself, what if I couldn't? He called me, he said, he said, thank you for taking the shame away from me. He said, they were busy debating. You are the one that saved lives. The question for you is this. Are you going to live with the name they gave you? Or will you have something that they will call you by virtue of where God took you to? Maybe I'm in the wrong place. So, I didn't come to pastor a bunch of people whose only assignment in life is I receive. No, 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 achieve. Are, are you hearing my voice here? There is no I achieve. I got there. He said, You're a prince. I came today to tell somebody. Leko pariatri hikatalaga dea lindre hina lobo shahata. Before the next two years, they will call you a prince. Yeah. Only ten people collected that. Before the next two years, you will have a name by what you achieved. Yeah. See that? I, I was I was looking at uh, something. You know. Are you with me? Yes, huh? Yes, you know, today in America, the Supreme Court gave a ruling concerning abortion, right? Huh? Overturning the uh, Roe versus Wade, the, something that said abortion is uh, legal in America. Today they overturned it and all of that. And people were just uh, my, making all kinds of comments. But you know, can I ask you something? Do you know that people sponsor things like that? Huh? There are people who have billions and all they do is use it to make trouble. The guy that the, this Bitcoin billionaire uh, that uh, did the FTX uh, something, I, I can't remember his name again now. They asked him, he said, are you interested in uh, uh, sponsoring any, last, this uh, last election, he was the highest donor. This a small boy like you was the highest donor to the Democratic Party. They asked him, I said, are you interested in the next election? Because he's one of those who are sponsoring all kinds of illegalities. All kinds of uh, homosexual rights and all of that. I, I, I'm not trying to impinge on him, but are you getting what I'm talking to you? All kinds of uh, things everywhere. You know what he said? He said, let the election come. 2024, he's ready to lay down one billion. One B dollars. To fight this issue of abortion. To make sure he's back. That's a, man, a young man. To fight all the things he's, he's passionate about. But you see what the Christians over there do. They say, Father, we bind. Shoko tokobo, shoko tokobo, shoko tokobo. No. The shoko tokobo will end in church. And then where money is needed. You must have the money to show. You didn't hear me. Even the churches that blow tongues will still raise money to build church. I confess. I confess. And they still ask you to make sacrifice. If it's only confession that brings the result, why didn't the pastor confess down the building? If I close here, I helped you. Am I talking to somebody here? After the confession, there has to be manifestation. There has to be a way to create it. Never die with the name you were given. Achieve a name that they will call you. If you are still with me, say yes. yes. Listen to me. Even if your father's name is a bad name. 
There's a place you can get to in life, bad becomes good. Let me ask a question. Anybody here in this building whose name is Mary, can you lift your hand? Anybody whose name is Mary? Thank you. That's one. Any other person? They didn't call anybody here Mary, the name of the mother of Jesus. Anybody like that? Huh? Okay, I saw one. I can't see far into the bar. At least I saw one. Huh? Outside, there are some people also. Now, the issue is simply this. Do you know the meaning of Mary? Mary simply means bitter. But see, so you, 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 you answer Mary today with joy. Wait, wait, wait. Why? Because the presence of Mary has changed Mary. No, you, did, you didn't get it. <laughs> Is anybody hearing me? The presence of Mary has changed that Mary. It's no longer bitter. It turned to sweet. You know, Jabez became so rich that they renamed the city after him. They didn't change his name. They called the city by his name. His name means son of sorrow. A whole city agreed to answer sons of sorrow. Because if this is how sorrow looks like, I want to be sorrowful. If this is how bitter looks like, I want to be bitter. Is anybody hearing me here? Too? How can sorrow be this rich? How can sorrow be this exciting? Oh no, make me sorrowful. Make me sorrow. I stretch my hand toward. May you enter the name you achieved. Sit down. It's the time is so running, and uh, I know. I know some of you. If you go home late, they will, uh, they will lock you out. <laughs> Come on, I want to believe God from today. Your story keeps going higher. So they call this guy Jacob, but he has been restless from the womb. And, and, and why was he restless? Why was he restless? In the womb, he had no understanding. No, you didn't hear me. But there was something in his DNA. Are you hearing me? That was speaking. But when he came out, there was an understanding. Are you here? You see, the driving force, and that's the third thing I want to bring to you. The driving force of spiritual adventures is a personal revelation of the covenant. The driving force of spiritual adventures is a personal revelation of the covenant. Why was Jacob driving toward the blessing? Why was he passionate about it? Why did he want to be something by the covenant? Because by the blessing, because he understood the covenant. Are you with me? Uh, are you here? Please, everybody look up here as we are taking this journey. You see, that two of us are in this same building doesn't mean that both of us rate the same in the kingdom. Huh? No, I don't think you're getting it. That, that both of us are sitting here doesn't mean we rate the same in the kingdom. Huh? You know, they have told you that in the eye of God all men are equal. That's a lie, you. That is a lie. Do you know when God wanted to kill people in Israel? God made a comment. He said, even if Noah, Job, and Daniel ask me to intervene, I will not. He mentioned three names. He said, if Noah, Job, and Daniel, why would Jehovah mention three names and say, if these people ask me, I won't I will still say no. Because there's something about those people. You are not here. Is anybody hearing me? Here? Yes. <laughs> you, see, you, see, you see, they told you, oh, God is not respect of persons. That's what Peter said. <laughs> That's what Peter said. 
He said, I, he said, he said, I perceive. He didn't say I was told. Okay, but let's, let's analyze his perception. Let's analyze his perception. Peter, if God doesn't respect people, why did God see all the Gentiles and give you a dream in Joppa to go to the house of one man? Mention his name. Ask you to go there. He wasn't he, to give, lead him to Christ. He, why didn't he allow other people doing evangelism to lead him to Christ? Are there not people giving tracts on the road? Is there not an evangelist preaching in that city? Why did it, why must Cornelius be saved by you going? So why will God be personally interested in Cornelius being born again? And God doesn't respect person. Is Cornelius only Gentile in the city? No, you are not hearing. Peter, if God doesn't respect persons, why are you in Cornelius' house? Because why you were coming, you should have just brought somewhere else and say, it's you I'm sent to. No, you must be in Cornelius' house. There's a reason. Because there is something about Cornelius that weighs heavy in the heart of God. Is anybody hearing me? There, there was something that weighs heavy. And all of us are not the same. He said to, he said to uh, uh, Israel, he said, Ethiopia and Sheba, I will give for you. He said, I will give men for you. He said, if they are looking to kill you and they need to exchange, he said, I will find the whole nation and exchange for you. <laughs> so there are people today, if death is looking for them, God will say, take. He will just put one person and say, take. Am I talking to something? We don't wear all the same. In the eye of God, all men are not equal. They are not hearing me yet. If you don't understand this, you know, that's why a lot of people have no respect for fatherhood. <laughs> very, very bad children. I'm telling you. <laughs> they have no respect. They, they say, we, you know, we are the same. We are the same. We are, we are the same. We are the same. <laughs> And, 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 and they're dying without help. Please listen to me. You see, Jacob was a kid. Growing with his brother Esau. And then, he's hearing his father talk about the God of Abraham. And talk about his adventures with the God of Abraham. About how God picked his father Abraham from nobody at 75 and turned him into a generational wonder. And how he God picked him up and brought him this far. And Jacob is hearing. And Esau is hearing. But Esau they understand. Esau was interested in the money the papa had. He didn't understand the root of the money. He didn't understand the covenant. You know, one of, please see that. one of the things I notice about assistant pastors and workers in church is this. If you have an assistant pastor who understands the principles of preaching and organization and doesn't understand the principles of spirituality, he will think that the ability to build false momentum is proof of anointing. So when he's under your cover, he's able to ginger people, do this, build false momentum. All kinds of nonsense is going on in his life, but he's okay until he steps out. And then the thing that looks for Jesus, look for him. When he starts looking for him, then suddenly the thing just pick him up, turn him upside down, shake him, shake him, shake him, shake him. <laughs> you thought was going to be a prince six years later you can't even recognize him you ask him, you say what happened here no he didn't understand he didn't understand that there's a mystery in the covenant oh some people think that if you can only put English together 
if you have a good tongue and you can take this quotation and take the other one and take the other one and put this and, and then just move it like that and people shout oh you got a minister so they take T.D. Jets and take uh, Francis and take uh, Siren Fortic and take all this and mix all of them together and blow this. Wow, children, shout wow. You shout wow until you have a need. The moment life begins to bite you, grammar doesn't matter anymore. What matters is solution. Is there a God that can answer? That's what you'll be asking. Am I wasting my time with you? Oh man, don't wait the same. And for you to take a journey to be a prince of God, you got to understand that the mystery is in the covenant. Are you still with me? The mystery is in the covenant. Jacob allowed himself to be schooled in the covenant. Esau did not. How do I know? Look at the birthright issue. Esau just comes back from hunting. He has gotten some squirrels, one antelope, one squirrel. You're not hearing me. Harvested some bush mango. Are you hearing me here? He's back. While he was passing, he saw some small stream by there. He put up a some uh, uh, you know through his uh, hook and all that caught five fish uh, he's coming holding his fish like this with the antelope at the back and two squirrels in the hand guess back home he's tired from the adventure of hunting and he said ha, Jack how are you is that fine what have you been doing <laughs> he's been reading the word you are not hearing me. You know the people that won't mock you when you say I've been reading the word. I've been in the presence of God. Ah, nah, nonsense. <laughs> Jake, what have you doing? I, I, I've been in the word. What kind of word? Daddy was sharing. Ah, daddy was sharing things today. Mommy was telling me deep things today. It's a nonsense. All those cock and book stories. I beg I'm hungry. What are you hungry? I, I beg. I'm hungry. I want to eat. Did mommy prepare anything? He said, no. He said, why would she prepare something? She was busy gisting you about old people's story. I beg. What, what do you have? He said, I just have this thing. He said, little porridge yam. He said, I need it. <laughs> and Jacob remembered what the mother was just telling him. About the place. Of the birthright. About the patriarchal line. That the covenant raises up. About the honor of a priest. And the king that goes with the firstborn. What? <laughs> you want my food? He said yes. He said oh boy. He said this thing we tried to handle in the womb. And it didn't work. Let's handle it. <laughs> I want to be first born. The young man looked at him. He said, I'm dying of hunger. You're talking about first born. We only two of you. One, two, one, two, one, two. So, even if you answer first, what do you gain? It's not like we are 200. It's only me and you here. He said, I want to be first born. It's okay, you are first born. He said, no, calm down, calm down, calm down. Before the fool swear to me. Jake, why are you so passionate about being first born? We are just two of us here. Anything Papa gets is big enough. To, can you, Papa is the richest guy in the whole nation. Whatever he gives, we can share. I mean, how can Dangote's children fighting about who is best? First. It doesn't make sense. Even if Papa give you 20 billion and give me 15, let them be the problem. You're not going to finish eating your own. I'm not going to finish eating my own. So why are you in hell? He said, just swear. Where was Jacob coming from? From the depth of the revelation he caught from mommy. No, you're not hearing me here today. 
You see, the reason they cheat you in life is that you catch no revelation. There is nothing you know about God that will make you say no to things. You know, when you are making decisions, there's no reflection of what you know about God. You're not hearing. When you're handling relationship, when you're with a boy who says he loves you, when you're with a girl who says she loves you, there is nothing you know about God that's affecting your decision. When your emotions are stirred up, when there's a hunger in you, when there's a passion rising in you, there's nothing you know about God that can make you say no. You don't make decisions with the consciousness of covenant because all you know is ceremonial religion. You have no understanding of the depths of the mysteries of God. Are they still here? Yes, sir. So look at Jack. Ah, no, 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 no. Ah, I swear. He said, Why? He said, Swear now. Swear. He said, I swear. He said, No, touch ground. He touched ground. He said, now lick the sand. He licked the sand. He said, raise your hand up. Let the earth and the heavens hear your voice. I swear you are the firstborn. He said, thank God. Or you are it. In the midst of that activity, Esau didn't know something transpired. He never saw that something left him and went over there. Do you know there are some gears that somebody took their destiny who didn't find out? Do you know there are some young men that a, young, a woman took their destiny who never found out? They, you, know, you didn't know. Do you know that the day something left Samson he didn't find out? He said he wished not. There are people that get to 35 and all the favor on earth has gone. That they discover that I am empty. That's why they are in church shouting I receive. They didn't know when the thing left. Because it was still working until they got to 35. And they sat and locked this door, locked that door, locked that door, locked that door. They shake here nothing. They shake here nothing. They go here nothing. They go there nothing. I say, ah! What is happening? Who bewitched me? No, you lose that long. No witch came near. You don't go. They are not hearing me. Are you hearing me? You say, Pastor, why are you saying that? Because on the day the blessing went, the Bible said Jesus sought it with tears. But he lost it long ago. I'm in the wrong church, you. Anybody hearing me anywhere? Yes, Lift your hand above your head. Any mystery trying to steal your destiny is cursed now. Yeah. It is broken now. Yeah. It is destroyed now. Yeah. It is cut down now. Yeah. When your enemy rises, another portion. Yeah. See that? When men understand the covenant, they escape reproach. When men understand the covenant, they plant themselves in the place of the blessing. Now something looks like it's working now doesn't mean it's going to work next year. There are some things you touch in the covenant. You are dead. The problem is you don't understand. Let me give you an illustration. Are you here? You know in our place they say when a lizard follows when a rat follows a lizard and enters rain <laughs> when they come out, the lizard will be dry. The rat will be wet. The rat doesn't understand that both of us enter the rain. Doesn't mean that both of us will survive it. You see, there are people who don't know that there are things they touch, their life turns upside down. And there are times they are walking with God. You touch a big thing, nothing happens. You touch a big thing, nothing happens. You touch a big thing, nothing happens. And, and then you touch the small one. And he's gone. You remember Samson? Yes, sir. When Samson was sleeping with a harlot. And then they said, the Philistines come against you. Samson jumped off from the bed with a harlot. Ran out and the Philistines pursued him. He ran to the gate of Gaza. And nobody to open the gate. And they were coming. He put hand here, put hand and lifted the gate, put on his back. And ran with the gate up a mountain. 
The anointing was so strong. Out of a bed, he jumped out from on top of a halot with a mighty unction. I, th I think I'm in the wrong place. Is anybody hearing me here? How? 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 The same Samson. The same Samson. Nobody says she, he slept with Delilah. There's no record in the Bible he slept with Bram. All Delilah did was bob his hair. He's a baba. He just, just. <laughs> is anybody hearing me? Delilah is a baba. The moment the baby was completed, Samson got up. Delilah, Samson, hey, the police has been upon you. He got up. He said, I'm shaking myself again. How can her court be worse than a daughter? How can her court be more serious than fornication? You see, all of you here, all of you here, you got to understand that there's a place God is holding you. And if you are serious about your destiny, you better find out before it's too late. No, you're not hearing me. You see, the bad thing about Samson is that he knew, but he didn't take charge of it. Because he was aware. He, the, where does your strength lie from? He said, it's here. He knew. But he didn't understand the implication of the haircut. If I stop here, is anybody hearing my voice here today? When we're talking about the making of a, what, what do you understand about covenant? Please sit down. Let, let, me, let me just break this down in a little way and then we move on. Is, is anybody here? Uh, is anybody here? Do you know there's some one or two or three persons here now that can stay for five years, didn't pay tight and didn't see any challenge. And they will think that not paying tight is, is a blessing. Because life is going on and they don't pay. It's all of those foolish people. And then suddenly they turn and they touch something else. Just that they quarrel with the pastor and heaven He doesn't wake up. He's flat on the floor. His business, everything is gone. How? There are some things you have to know about the covenant you share with God so you don't die. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I think, I think this, I'm taking you to where nobody taught you. Because you grew up in church. You think that God is one size fits all. You are not hearing me here. But everyone, he said, uh, but, uh, you know, I, I, I even committed the fornication and then I came out and God still helped me. I understand. You still got married. You still have children. I understand. But wait, wait, wait. There's a place you pass like this and it will hold you. So that you escape that one that look big doesn't mean you keep escaping. You need to understand that God is a covenant God. I have to go yes, back. Sir. Yes, sir. Are they hearing me here today? That's why a lot of people in church are reckless and stupid and foolish. And then by the time life grips them, it's late. It's late. Anytime you see a man that Satan is holding and the whole community gathers and is crying, leave him now, leave him now, leave him now, and God folds his hand like this, there's something. I think I'm in the wrong place. Are we in the right place? Anytime you see somebody, poverty grip him. They say, bring your shoe. He brought the shoe, put on the altar. Nothing changed. He said, remove your tie. He took his tie, put on the altar. Nothing changed. It's okay, your coat too. He took the coat, put on the tie. Nothing. He said, bring your singlet. He took his singlet, put on the altar. Nothing changed. There is something he swallowed years ago hey. that he cannot vomit. They're not hearing me. That is why some people's battle in a long battle. Hey. 
Are they hearing me? I mean, I have to, I have to stop because they're not hearing me. Are they hearing me? You see, you see, you see. Anybody who doesn't understand covenant with God, we think that faith is just confess. Make it louder. Confess. <laughs> Make it louder. No, 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 no. No. He goes deeper than that. If it was that easy, everybody would be making it. I stretch my hand toward you. May you never be consumed by life. Yeah. Jacob understood the making of a prince. How do you walk with God and not get hurt? Get to know him. Get to know his covenant. Get to have a clear understanding of your place in God. That's a security. You didn't hear me. Can I ask you a question? Huh? Who met Moses at the burning bush? Huh? God, right? Huh? Who sent him to his... Huh? Who wanted to kill Moses as he was going? You're not here. Who stood on the way to Egypt to kill Moses? Why? Because of one small nonsense that Moses didn't do. He didn't steal. He didn't kill. He didn't lie. Moses forgot to circumcise his son. And God came on the road to kill him. You called me. I answer. I say, I know one go. You say, I should go. I they go now. You come to kill me. Waiting now. He said, My dealing with you forbids. Am I wasting my time with somebody here? You got to understand this God so that you don't waste your life in the kingdom. He said, nah. say, all of this is attacking. It doesn't work for everybody. It works, so believe me, it works. It overwork. Covenant works. Kingdom works. Prayer works. Fasting works. Confession works. Giving works. If it's not working for you, let check it. Are they still here? Sit down, give me a few minutes. I told you I'm talking on the making of a prince. I've not even gone one tenth of what I'm talking about. So, what, what are we going to do now? Uh, are you with me? We have less than 11 minutes to go. And tomorrow I already, I already have a different message to preach. And uh, maybe I should close and continue tomorrow. Because tomorrow I wanted to talk to you on the days of the mighty men. Because, yeah, something is about to change. Who wants to be mighty here? Your season has come. I, I can't hear your amen. Amen. Oh, 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 oh. But we're, we're going to close in a few. Just give me a few minutes. We, we are going to run this up. Are, are you with me? No, 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 no. Hello? Uh, I'm trying to see where to. Well, let me wrap this up and maybe we'll continue. When I, pray, when I finish praying in the house, I'll know where we'll continue tomorrow. Are you with me? Because there is, there, there is something about becoming a prince of God that you, you, you need to understand. Listen. Kingdom royalty is possible. And may you be royalty in this kingdom. It's possible. It's possible. Ah! And Isaac sowed in the land in a famine. And that same year he ripped a hundredfold. How? There's something about him that the earth cannot subdue. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Ah, no. Kingdom royalty is possible. It's possible. Are you still with me? How can a man marry 700 wives and then fight one war one day? Yes, 
You ask him, what did happen? What did happen to Solo? There was something that David touched that gave Solo cover. No, you're not hearing. If not for what David touched, after the second wife, Solo, there must be. Uh, God will respond though. But the third one, fifth one, seventh one, especially the one that took him to go and worship idol. God will respond. Slap the man out of the throne. But when God turns and raises his hand, he remembers David. He said, Kai, David, David, why did I swear to you? Why did I? Hey, Kai. There's something called kingdom reality. That a man is sitting in heaven today. You ask him, who are you? He said, I'm son of David. A God answering son of a man. That the one you are worshipping, you ask him to introduce yourself. He said, now my papa be that. Jesus, who are you? He said, now my papa be. And he's pointing at a man he created. Kingdom royalty is possible. We continue to my rise to your feet. Lift your hand. I want you to just pray that prayer. Lord, take me there. Lord, take me to the place of honor. Lord, I want to have value and worth with you. Lord, I want to carry weight in this kingdom. Lord, I want generations to submit to the grace I carry. Open your mouth and pray that prayer. Anywhere you are, cry out to God. You want to kneel down, kneel down. You want to stand up, stand up. You want to raise your hand, raise your hand. Lord, I must matter in this kingdom. Open your mouth and speak to him. I don't worship. Open your mouth. Pray like your life depends on him. upon me, breathe.